Thank you very much. Um, I was always taught that you never stand between Jews and their food. But you've all eaten, so we can sit back and relax, and uh, it's now it's my time. And also, uh, Mr. Sexton, you never give a rabbi three minutes to speak. Um, thank you very much to the uh, sponsors and those that are hosting the evening and to the judges. Um, I'd like to wish uh, and thank all those that have uh, nominated and uh, awarded me this uh, award. Um, I'd also like to mention the President of the African Jewish Congress, Mervyn Smith, Executive Member, Mrs. Ann Harris from Hermanus, and not only with the late Chief Rabbi, I'd be happy to be here because what he saw at the Lubnas do, but there's Johnny Walker on every table. To Judge Ralph Zulman, my Chairman of Country Communities, and to all those at the Board of Deputies who support my activities, and to the wonderful people across the length and breadth of South Africa, in all nine provinces, and those in the 12 Sub-Saharan countries which you heard about, to which I travel. They, my dear friends, are a remnant which still remains in the country towns of Southern Africa, whether it comprises a tiny farming community, a businessman or a professional and his family, or a lone Jew left to his or her own devices in the Hamadullahs. For the past 17 years, I have endeavored to shepherd this far-flung flock back into the fold of Yiddishkeit, both those who find themselves literally far from the community and those who need guidance to shepherd them back into the community through spiritual leadership, which involves my regular visits and attending to life cycle events of the Jew, which are from cradle to the grave. And as Mandy mentioned, uh, Mandy Wiener, it's just one of the families that are, were affiliated, are affiliated. I officiated at Mandy's bat mitzvah, her wedding, um, her brother's wedding, her sister's wedding, and her family are very dear to me. And in fact, her father is my best friend. Um, so it's the connection. It's not only people that are unaffiliated, but it's people that are affiliated as well. The sincerity and genuineness of Jews living in the country communities had me hooked at the age of 14. As a student at Yeshiva College, I took part in a program which conducted Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur services in the small communities. 13 years later, I was appointed as a spiritual leader to the country communities. Pierre Vot, Ethics of Our Fathers, teaches us, Separate not thyself from, the con from thy congregation. Altifrosh Minatsibur. Reflecting on my 17 years as spiritual leader to the country communities of South Africa, and later the African Jewish Congress, I learned this, that the flip side of the wise coin, just as it is forbidden for an individual to separate him or herself from the community, it is an obligation on the leaders, lay leaders or professionals of the community to reunite others with community, not to create the conditions that result in or perpetuate separation. My dear friends, in the Torah portion that we read this past Shabbat, it relates how Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher, delivered his parting message and rebuke to the nation, which he led with such devotion and which he taught so much to. And when he addressed their faults and shortcomings, he does not, ref ref uh, he does not refer explicitly to any of the terrible events, but rather... He gives only a veiled reference to the sins by simply mentioning the places where they occurred in a travelogue. I quote from the Friday night sermon of Rabbi Tanza, my mentor of many years standing, and he said, We would do well to remember this great principle of human nature that is embedded in Mo Moshe's su subtlety. When dealing with the human failings, deal very gently, even if you are right. Teach sensitivity and impart genuine respect and admiration. Without that, you cannot raise a people. Without that, my dear friends, we cannot raise or maintain a cohesive community either. This has been the foundation on which I have undertaken my duties. I don't judge my congregants if they drive on Shabbat, they don't eat kosher, keep their businesses open, or even if they're married out of the faith. Sure, I encourage them to become more involved and observant, as you saw, I transport kosher food, put on mezuzahs, encourage the ladies to, put on tefillin, uh, to, to light Shabbos candles, men to put on tefillin. You're listening. I thought it's late. It's a test to see if you're listening. However, my dear friends, a Jew is a Jew. Many of you will recall the late Rabbi Eloy of saintly memory and his explicit love for all Jews, irrespective of their place in the, in the spectrum of Yiddishkeit. 
He had a philosophy of ahavat chinam, causeless love. My work is to keep these people Jewishly sensitive and to make them feel part of our Jewish community and nation, which is only possible because it is backed up by the mandate of the Jewish Board of Deputies, which is to serve every Jew irrespective of religious affiliation. Fulfilling this tenet of our sacred Jewish teaching has led me on a journey of discovery and self-discovery. And although not seeking reward, tonight is indeed a genuine and humbling acknowledgement of a major part of my life's work. Our family have a double simcha. Tonight, my daughter Leah, who's with me this evening, it is her 19th birthday. And Leah, I cannot promise you a party like this again, but, but enjoy the evening. Friends, all this has made me look deep into the recesses of my mind, bringing to the four thoughts and feelings which has now surfaced in a book, tracing my steps as the traveling rabbi on our African subcontinent, interspersed with humor, anecdotes, and stories about the land and its people that I've met, including kings, queens, their courtiers, and presidents. And Mandy, I may need Mighty Schultz's number when I finish publishing this book. <laughs> Through a well-known writer, I'm recording this for posterity, and I think that it is fitting tonight to make this public. And we're hoping to have it completed by the end of the, within the year. I share this award with all those who made my work possible and my life so fulfilling. I wish to thank all the people along the way, Jews and Gentiles, whether they speak English or Afrikaans or Zulu, Koza, Sutu, for welcoming me, there, me warmly into their communities. Let me leave you now with a thought from Sir Winston Churchill, which is in fact states on my email signature. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Thank you. One last thing, the guys from my high club on Shabbos, the blue label's on. Thank you.